When I came to Hollywood in 1913, the first man who asked me for a job was a cowboy extra. I still have the notebook in which I wrote his name, Hal Roach. Beside it is the salary he asked for, $5 a day. And beside that, my notation, too much. <laughs> I hired others for $3 a day, and thereby did Hal Roach a favor. He went out and started his own studio, making comedies featuring another unknown extra named Harold Lloyd. In time, he started the Our Gang series, and the motion picture industry now awards him the laurel for producing more comedies than anybody else in Hollywood. Wait a minute, C.B. If you're going to mention Laurel, you've got to mention Hottie. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hal Roach, ladies and gentlemen, who insists that among his laurels is Hardy, and many other great comedians, including B.B. Daniels, whom I stole from him. Gee, C.B., I'm as nervous tonight as that cowboy who asked you for a job. <laughs> Why nervous? You've graduated from cowboy to polo player. Don't blame that on me. It's my horse's fault. Can I help it if he was ambitious? He was more ambitious than some of the horses that run at your Santa Anita racetrack. You've picked many winners for films. You've developed the most famous group of youngsters in the world, our gang. But your greatest achievement was changing the custard pie from a harmless dessert to a deadly weapon. But you have developed the most famous character in Hollywood. Which one? The Yes Man. <laughs> Never heard of him. Yes, Mr. DeMille. Uh, wh where do you get your child actors? <clears throat> well, I went through raising those kids. At first, I couldn't get actors for our gang. People didn't want their children in films, and the slogan in Hollywood was, Mothers, hide your children. Here comes Hal Roach. <laughs> but now, after 17 years, the situation's reversed, and the slogan in the studio is, Hide Hal Roach. Here come the mothers. <laughs> now, you, you created a lot of laughter in those years, and millions of people have relived their childhood seeing those comedies on the screen. You're more than a great showman, Hal. You make people laugh and forget their trouble. Go so on, cowboy. On the evening of December the 7th, 1933, Hal Roach threw himself an anniversary party. He was celebrating 20 years as a film producer and his peers lauded him as the youngest veteran of the moving picture industry in Hollywood. One of the studio's sound stages was decked out for the evening's a rather ornate banquet facility and the studio administration building was brightly lit from end to end. While it may be a leap to suggest that Mr. Roach and Thelma Todd were the official hosts for the event, Photographs taken that evening indicate that they did act in that capacity to some degree. Here, Hal Roach escorts Jean Harlow and her mother, while Thelma Todd can be found on the arm of Irvin J. Thalberg at the hat check desk. Still later in the evening, Thelma made the rounds as a candy and cigarette girl and is shown here crowning for the camera with comedic partner Patsy Kelly. At least one set of our eyes and ears at the anniversary banquet was seated at the same table as comedy legends Polly Moran and Raymond Griffith. Griffith was reported to have suggested that custard pie may be on the dessert menu. Only, he said, it might be too much of a temptation to people like Polly Moran to toss it around. A nice sentiment, but one that's a bit too cute for the historical record. In this photo, we find Ginger Rogers and her mother with actor Lou Ayres serving as escort. Meanwhile, at the head table, Hal Roach and Harold Lloyd listen to Will Rogers crack wise. This photo of Walt Disney with Hal Roach and Laurel and Hardy, and the next, are often incorrectly identified as having been taken at the 1931-32 Academy Awards Banquet. They were, however, taken at the Roach anniversary event. Here, the boss poses with his biggest box office attraction. In this photo, Will Rogers visits with Mrs. Hal Roach and Mrs. Laurel and Hardy, again at the head table. Sometime later, the boys pose with Mrs. Roach, now minus her wrap, and the ever lovely Thelma Todd. And just when you think that our Thelma might go an entire evening without ruining a photo op by pulling some kind of face, think again.
Beginning at 9pm, one half hour of the banquet was broadcast over NBC through the facilities of local station KECA. Charlie Chase acted as Master of Ceremonies and the featured band was Harry Jackson's Orchestra. The programme featured performances by Stan Laurel, Oliver Hardy, Thelma Todd and Patsy Kelly. A monologue was delivered by Will Rogers and Charlie Chase provided comedy musical numbers. Special impromptu performances by Groucho Marx and Harold Lloyd rounded out the programme. Mr Roche took the opportunity to inform the listening audience and assembled guests that the studio was about to embark upon a new course. He stated that Laurel and Hardy would begin work shortly on a grand new feature in which they would play Simple Simon and the Pie Man. The new feature was to be called Babes in Toyland. The highlight of the evening came in the form of a grand birthday cake with 20 candles all around. Mr Roach was joined for the cake cutting by Stan, Ollie, Thelma and Patsy. Mr Roach's 20th anniversary party continued into the wee hours of Friday December the 8th and a grand event it must have been. Thank you.